The Ebola outbreak has many fearing a global health crisis. Join us now as infectious disease specialist, Dr. Brad Spellberg. And Dr. Spellberg, everyone who's been watching the news now knows that the CDC has made this a level one activation. Where do things stand right now? What does that mean? It's important for people to realize the level one activation is really an internal CDC process that frees up resources so they can focus more on this particular problem. It doesn't have any specific consequences or relevance to the general public. So and let's, let's talk a little bit about the risk of Americans developing Ebo yeah. Ebola virus. Let's, let's talk about the risk of someone traveling from Sierra Leone or uh, Liberia and practically bringing the virus over. What are the risks for the average American just living day to day? The, it is entirely possible that there will be travelers who bring the virus to the United States. But I think the important thing for people to remember is that it is spreading in Africa because of the infrastructure in Africa. It is believed likely in the United States that it will not spread beyond the initial person who brings the virus in because our hospitals ha are really set up to do infection control quite effectively. But when we have a hospital system where one in 25 people in the hospital actually get an infection in the hospital, then what makes our system so different? Because most of the people who are getting the Ebola virus in these countries are getting it because they care about their loved ones, yes. because they're trying to take care of them. Ebola turns out not to be spread as easily as many other infections. You actually need prolonged close contact with body fluids, so blood, vomit, urine. It is not aerosolized. You can't just breathe it out and breathe it That's out. That's one of the huge things that I believe can allow us to be a little less scared, and that is it is not an airborne agent. That is huge. But the one thing is we, we're learning a lot. You know, yeah. we're, we're sitting here in the U.S. talking about how it's spread, and the truth is we're learning. So we don't necessarily know how much you need to come in contact with. You know, the idea is that it is spread through bodily fluids. We know that over 900 people have died. We know that this is not going to end anytime soon in Africa. What's interesting and scary about the virus to me, because we shouldn't be scared right now, okay, sitting in this room. The virus itself is very scary. Oh, absolutely. You know, so it maybe takes a few weeks after you get infected to have symptoms. It starts off with flu-like symptoms, fever, headache, muscle joint pain. But then you might develop vomiting, diarrhea, and this is where, to me, it gets scary. It's a hemorrhagic fever. Internal and external bleeding, your organs can shut down, and ultimately that's what can lead to death. Now, when you look at something like this really quickly, I, I see any virus and it says, okay, over 50% mortality, up to 90% mortality. That is scary. Very <laughs> Especially scary. Especially when you're a healthcare worker and you see that all these, I, I call them heroes, are, are overworking and, and getting sick. Even as an ID doctor, doesn't it scare you when, you when you hear something being that deadly? This is a scary virus, and there is nothing scarier as a, and more frustrating as a provider than having a patient die despite everything that you try to do for them. But I think there's a couple points we need to remember. The 60% death rate, the 90% death rate in past outbreaks, that's in a setting where we don't have highly sophisticated ICUs. Mm. If we get patients in this country with, the, with this virus, we're going to get them into an ICU, we're going to give them life support, and that is very likely to drop that death rate down. The other point is that there is another virus called Lassa fever virus that is similar to Ebola. And there have been cases in the United States imported from Africa of Lassa fever. There has never been transmission from the index cases to anyone else, including cases that have had many, many contacts. That is reassuring.